My female friend at the time who had a crush on me later mentioned that my ex-girlfriend was giving her the stink eye, lol, and I was basking in all the glory of revenge. It turns out my ex-girlfriend was single at the time. Shocking. After another half year, I got curious, which has always been one of my biggest weaknesses, and I decided to Google her. What I found was hours worth of porn. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story. Guys, if you want to send in your story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Whether it's a funny story, a successful story, a story where you want to receive advice or you are you want to give advice. You know, if you can just help one person, you've done your job. So uh, go ahead and send those stories to that email. So um, you guys read the title. Let's get into it. So subject, I got the last laugh. Dear True Story, thank you for your channel. I am sharing the story of my very first relationship so that others going through the same ordeal can learn from my mistakes and about female nature. I was born and raised in Guatemala and went to an all boys Catholic school from middle school to high school. Pair that up with being an introvert. Needless to say that I had little to no experience with women going into college where I met my first girlfriend. My freshman year at college was one of the best years of my life. I met new people and made a group of friends, two males, two females, and we started to hang out constantly. One of the girls in my group, who later became my girlfriend, had a high school boyfriend at the time, who she had been seeing for about three years. After hanging out as a group for some time, she started making remarks about how jealous her boyfriend was. We started chatting on MSN Messenger and we started getting closer. I started to develop a crush on her, and when she finally broke things off with her boyfriend, I let her know how I felt about her. She turned me down and said that she actually had a crush on my other friend in the group. And this crushed me, man. I felt so embarrassed and humiliated because I thought for a fact that she liked me. When in fact, she liked my taller friend. Shocking, right? That didn't stop us from hanging out though. So I took it in stride. After it finally dawned on me that me and her were never going to be an item, I started treating her differently. And little did I know at the time, it worked. It actually worked. We would constantly chat on MSN and text message throughout this time and she would tell me about another guy asking her out to the movies, which I don't care for because by that time I had moved on. But then she turned it around and was asking me when we were going to the movies. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, when you were chasing her, she was like running away, but when you started pulling back, she started chasing you. Yeah, that, that actually does work. There was definitely a shift in her behavior with me, and we started hanging out alone. And one day, she fessed up that now she had a crush on me. So we started hanging out, hooking up and keeping things casual for about four months. The best four months of my freshman year. Then she started hinting at a relationship because she wasn't the type of girl to hook up with someone and not be official. How many times have we heard that story? So eventually, I was asking her to be my girlfriend, to which she later accepted. And we lived happily ever after. Nah, but because this is real life, happily ever after lasted only three months. Before she dumped me, I was crushed. I cried like a little punk. To this day, it was the hardest time of my life by far. I remember thinking through my sobs and tears that things would get better and I'd get over it. As a result of this, I started to distance myself from her physically and emotionally. And to my surprise, this also worked. She would reach out again and want to hang out. And like the simp I was at the time, I'd accept. We would hang out and hook up again. And all looked fine and things would be normal again. Only to find myself being pushed every time I got my hopes up. That we would be back together. I was so confused and desperate. I started asking advice from my female cousins and my cousin's girlfriends. Face palm, never ask a fish how to catch a fish. 
After I finally accepted that I was being jerked around like the weak beta simp that I was, I'd had enough. Even though it was my first relationship and I had little experience with women at the time, I was still smart enough to learn from the people around me as a young teen adult and I always told myself that I would not be that guy that hung around like a lost puppy and suffer for it. That is why I love the quote you end your videos with. Wise men learn from the mistakes of others. Yep, absolutely. I begin it with that quote and I end it with that quote. Learn from this story. Learn from these stories. That's what I, that's what I read these stories for. Learn from them. They helped me out eventually when I was going through stuff. Learn from mistakes. This is when I dug my heels in and told her as much to not contact me and proceeded to delete her from all my social media and MSN Messenger and moved on. It was a hard pill to swallow, but it was the only pill to swallow. I saw her months later on campus back with her ex-boyfriend and I'm not gonna lie, that hurt. I simply pretended to not see them as they walked right past me. They knew. I moved on with my life and started hanging out with more male and female friends. Some even developed a crush on me. And to my petty self, I got that chance to rub it in her face a couple of times because we still had mutual friends who we hung out to play pool with and drink with. My female friend at the time who had a crush on me later mentioned that my ex-girlfriend was giving her the stink eye, lol, and I was basking in all the glory of revenge. It turns out my ex-girlfriend was single at the time. Shocking. After graduating college, I moved to the U.S. and became a citizen. A couple years ago, I visited my parents and posted the photos on social media. And very quickly after sharing my post, my ex-girlfriend's sister slid into my DMs telling me she saw my post and assumed I was in Guatemala on vacation. She was asking me to meet up for coffee. And to my still petty self, I told her my parents were no longer living in Guatemala and that I was actually in Texas, where my parents currently live. And that I could in fact not meet up for coffee. Something tells me it wasn't the sister's idea to meet up for coffee though. Anyway, I haven't heard from her again, but I snooped around her social media and to one surprise, she's single. And here I am, a red pill MGTOW enjoying life as a single adult in my early 30s with a great career. Salute, salute, salute. A side gig that makes for my play money, living in a nice apartment and own a nice fast car with no worry in the world while the whole world is imploding around me thank you true story for allowing me to share my story keep up the good work brother hopefully this story helps others become red pill find their purpose in life and outgrow the simp mentality salute let me give my thoughts nice salute to you man i i always love it when i get to the end of a story from you guys and it says, man, I moved on. I'm focusing on my career. I'm getting money. I got side gigs. I, I, I work out. I become the best version of myself. That is what you're supposed to do. Not simp. And, and um, I, I'll, I'd say, you know, I, and I, I understand you snooped around her social media just to see what she was up to. But, hey, forget her, man. She She's dead to you. She 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 dumped you for whatever reason she didn't she didn't want anything serious like you did and you realize females nature you know now continue with your great career continue with your gig get more gigs you know your nice fast car man yeah you're living a life do you be great forget her and, and i think it's okay to like if i don't know if you left them on your social media or not or whatever or if you block them, but it's okay to leave them, leave them unblocked and, you know, stunt on them a little bit. I like a little stunt, you know, show them the fast car, show them the nice apartment, you know, the nice furniture and things like that. But let them talk to themselves in a the DM. When they DM you, you don't see it. It is what it is. You can stunt on them a little bit or you can just forget about them, you know, and move on with your life. It sounds like you're doing great. You're doing great things. Thank you for sending in this email. I really appreciate it. Um, salute to you. Let's check out another email. All right, guys. So we have another email here. It's a short one. And let's just get into it. So the subject is, I was red-pilled at 16. Okay. When I look back, when I, when I think back in high school, I knew a lot of guys who were super red-pilled already. Before I even knew what red-pill was and all that, they already knew. 
they already know. And here I was just, oh, I'm going to get married and have a family and blah, blah, blah. Nah, I knew a lot of guys I went to school with who were like, I know how these chicks are. I know how these women are. I know how you need to treat them. And I didn't understand it back then. <laughs> but let's check out this story. Hey, true story. Hey, true story. Here's my revenge story. Before I begin, you should know that the girl, the friend, and I are all religious and have been taught our whole lives not to have sex outside of marriage. Traditional like that. So this was when I was 16. I had gotten my first job at a nearby dog shelter. Now I had known of this girl for several years but never spoken to her. I had a massive crush on her but knew through my friends that she dated around because three of them had previously dated her. But I, being the blue pill, decided that I wanted to try dating her. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I was asking her, and she said yes. We went steady for a half a year before I helped her move in with a friend. I never met because I believed her when she said her family was abusive. After another half year, I got curious, which has always been one of my biggest weaknesses, and I decided to Google her. What I found was hours worth of porn. Whoa. I was furious when I found out and decided I wouldn't confront her in person. I drove up and glanced through a window on my way to the door and found one of my friends balls deep in her on a couch. Wow. At this point, it went from the unreasonable rage to a cold planned one. I went onto our church Facebook page. I spoke with the administrator, got their permission, and posted the full story as well as telling them about what I saw online about her. I then went to one of my friends who was the school gossip monger. He knew everyone and called in a few favors and got him to spread the word to the whole school. And at the end of all of it, I had broken up with her and ruined her reputation at school and at church, branding her a cheater and a slut. This story is four years old. Recently, I found out that she is a single mother with the child being born perfectly timed to roughly when I found out her effing my friend. Have a good one, man. And sorry if this, and sorry if this is poorly written, rambly. Wow. <laughs> Dude, let me give my thoughts. Dang, man, savage, <laughs> savage mode. Well, hmm. I wouldn't tell anybody to do that, to be honest. I wouldn't. I understand you were frustrated, you were upset. You know, you found out she, first of all, she was getting banged by your friend on her couch or his couch, whatever couch. You found porn videos of this woman. I mean, it's out there. Um, so I don't, I don't know how that whole RP thing works, but um, I wouldn't risk it. Honestly, I wouldn't risk. Let me show everybody on Facebook and in the church her videos. I wouldn't. I personally would not do that uh, because it's, it's very risky. But you said this happened four years ago. Um, nothing happened, I guess. So I guess you're good. But for me, I would I'd say just walk away. The best revenge is to walk away. Honestly, it really it truly is. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a good revenge story, just like the rest of you. Do not get me wrong. I love them. But to be honest, to be completely honest, the best revenge is to walk away and become successful and focus on yourself. And that's the truth, man. That's the truth. Thanks for sending in your story, though. Thanks for sending me your story. Um, guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. And I'll catch you guys at the next one.